Welcome to Starting Scripture, a reading of the Bible with Keturah. Today is day 222, and we are finishing up in the Book of Kings with Second Book of Kings 25, Second Book of Chronicles. We're also finishing up with Second Book of Chronicles 36, Proverbs verse 13, verses 21 through 25. So I will be putting up the truth in action. Second book of Kings, following from 24, the fall of Jerusalem. Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. Second Kings 25. So on January 15th, during the ninth year of Zedekiah's reign, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon led his entire army against Jerusalem. They surrounded the city and built siege ramps against its walls. Jerusalem was kept under siege until the 11th year of King Zedekiah's reign. By July 18th, in the 11th year of Zedekiah's reign, the famine in the city had become very severe, and the last of the food was entirely gone. Then a section of the city wall was broken down. Since the city was surrounded by the Babylonians, the soldiers waited for nightfall and escaped through the gate between the two walls behind the king's garden. Then they headed toward the Jordan Valley. But the Babylonian troops chased the king and overtook him on the plains of Jericho, for his men had all deserted him and scattered. They captured the king and took him to the king of Babylon at Riblah, where they pronounced judgment upon Je Zedekiah. They made Zedekiah watch as they slaughtered his sons. Then they gouged out Zedekiah's eyes, bound him in bronze chains, and led him away to Babylon. The temple destroyed. On August 14th of that year, which was the 19th year of King Nebuchadnezzar's reign, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard and an official of the Babylonian king, arrived in Jerusalem. He burned down the temple of the Lord, the royal palace, and all the houses of Jerusalem. He destroyed all the important buildings in the city. Then he supervised the entire Babylonian army as they tore down the walls of Jerusalem on every side. Then... Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, took as exiles the rest of the people who remained in the city, the defectors who had declared their allegiance to the king of Babylon and the rest of the population. But the captain of the guard allowed some of the poorest people to stay behind to care for the vineyards and the fields. The Babylonians broke up the bronze pillars in front of the Lord's temple, the bronze water carts, and the great bronze ba basin called the sea, and they carried all the bronze away to Babylon. They also took all the ash buckets, shovels, lamp snuffers, dishes, and all the other bronze articles used for making sacrifices at the temple. The captain of the guard also took the incense burners and basins and all the other articles made of pure gold or silver. The weight of the bronze from the two pillars, the sea, and the water carts was too great to be measured. These things had been made for the Lord's temple in the days of Solomon. Each of the pillars was 27 feet tall. The bronze capital on top of each pillar was seven and a half feet and was decorated with a network of bronze pomegranates all the way around. Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, took with him his prisoners, Sariah, the high priest, Zephaniah, the priest of the second rank, and the three chief gatekeepers. And from among the people still hiding in the city, he took an officer who had been in charge of the Judean army, five of the king's personal advisors, the army commander's chief secretary, who was in charge of recruitment, and sixty other citizens. Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, took them all to the king of Babylon at Riblah. And there at Riblah, in the land of Hamath, the king of Babylon, had them all put to death. So the people of Judah were sent into exile from their land. Gedaliah governs in Judah. Then King Nebuchadnezzar appointed Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, and grandson of Shaphan as governor over the people he had left in Judah. When all the army commanders and their men learned that the king of Babylon had appointed Gedaliah as governor, they went to see him at Mizpah. These included Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, Jahanan, son of Kariah, Sarahiah, son of Tanhumath, the Neophathite, Jezaniah, son of Machathite, and all their men. Gedaliah vowed to them that the Babylonian officials meant them no harm. Don't be afraid of them. Live in the land and serve the king of Babylon, and all will go well for you, he promised. But in mid-autumn of that year, 
Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, and grandson of Elishama, who was a member of the royal family, went to Mizpah with ten men and killed Gedaliah. He also killed all the Judean, Judean, Judeas, and Babylonians who were with him at Mizpah. Then all the people of Judah, from the least to the greatest, as well as the army commanders, fled in panic to Egypt, for they were afraid of what the Babylonians would do to them. Hope for Israel's royal line. In the thirty-seventh year of the exile of King Jehoiachin of Judah, evil Merodach ascended to the Babylonian throne. He was kind to Jehoiachin and released him from prison on April 2nd of that year. He spoke kindly to Jehoiachin and gave him a higher place than all the other exiled kings in Babylon. He supplied Jehoiachin with new clothes to replace his prison garb and allowed him to dine in the king's presence for the rest of his life. So the king gave him a regular food allowance as long as he lived. Now, second book of Chronicles 36. Jehoahaz rules in Judah. Then the people of the land took Josiah's son, Jehoahaz, and made him the next king in Jerusalem. Jehoahaz was 23 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months. Then he was deposed by the king of Egypt, who demanded that Judah pay 7,500 pounds of silver and 75 pounds of gold as tribute. Jehoiakim rules in Judah. The king of Egypt then installed Eliakim, the brother of Jehoahaz, as the next king of Judah and Jerusalem, and he changed Eliakim's name to Jehoiakim. Then Necho took Jehoahaz to prison to Egypt as a prisoner. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 11 years. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord his God. Then King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came to Jerusalem and captured it, and he bound Jehoiakim in bronze chains and led him away to Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar also took some of the treasures from the temple of the Lord, and he placed them in his palace in Babylon. The rest of the events in Jehoiakim's reign, including all the evil things he did, and everything found against him, are recorded in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. Then his son, Jehoiachin, became the next king. Jehoiachin rules in Judah. Jehoiachin was 18 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months and ten days. Jehoiachin did what was evil in the Lord's sight. In the spring of the year, King Nebuchadnezzar took Jehoiachin to Babylon. Many treasures from the temple of the Lord were also taken to Babylon at that time, and Nebuchadnezzar installed Jehoiachin's uncle, Zedekiah, as the next king in Judah and Jerusalem. Zedekiah rules in Judah. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 11 years. But Zedekiah did what was evil in the sight of the Lord his God, and he refused to humble himself when the prophet Jeremiah spoke to him directly from the Lord. He also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, even though he had taken an oath of loyalty in God's name. Zedekiah was a hard and stubborn man, refusing to turn to the Lord, the God of Israel. Likewise, all the leaders of the priests and the people became more and more unfaithful. They followed all the pagan practices of the surrounding nations, desecrating the temple of the Lord that had been consecrated in Jerusalem. The Lord, the God of their ancestors, repeatedly sent his prophets to warn them, for he had compassion on his people and his temple. But the people mocked these messengers of God and despised their words. They scoffed at the prophets until the Lord's anger could no longer be restrained and nothing could be done. The Fall of Jerusalem So the Lord brought the king of Babylon against them. The Babylonians killed Judah's young men, even chasing after them into the temple. They had no pity on the people killing both young men and young women, the old and the infirm. God handed all of them over to Nebuchadnezzar. The king took them home to Babylon. The king took home to Babylon all the articles, large and small, used in the temple of God, and the treasures from both the Lord's temple and from the palace of the king and his officials. Then his army burned the temple of God, tore down, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, burned all the palaces, and completely destroyed everything of value. The few who survived were taken as exiles to Babylon, and they became servants to the king and his sons until the kingdom of Persia came to power. So the message of the Lord, spoken through Jeremiah, was fulfilled. 
the land finally enjoyed its Sabbath rest, lying desolate until the 70 years were fulfilled, just as the prophet had said. Cyrus allows the exiles to return. In the first year of King Cyrus of Persia, the Lord fulfilled the prophecy he had given through Jeremiah. He stirred the heart of Cyrus to put this proclamation in writing and to send it throughout his kingdom. This is what the king, what king Cyrus of Persia says. The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth. He has appointed me to build him a temple at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Any of you who are his people may go there for this task. And may the Lord your God be with you. Proverbs 13, verses 21 through 25. Trouble chases sinners, while blessings reward the righteous. Good people leave an inheritance to their grandchildren, but the sinner's wealth passes to the godly. A poor person's farm may produce much food, but injustice sweeps it all away. Those who spare the rod of discipline hate their children. Those who love their children care enough to discipline them. The godly eat to their heart's content, but the belly of the wicked goes hungry. And now, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Dear Lord, direct our path this day through your Holy Spirit. Your child, your servant, is listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.